degrees before and it's just I was like I don't know it was part of the thing thank you okay we got we got a rhythm all right good morning and welcome to the first 2023 meeting of Fayette County Commission um we're gonna start this meeting out with the Pledge of Allegiance and then we're going to get on with the organization of the county stand please Mr. Assessor, will you lead us, please? Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. Well done. Thank you. And happy new year, everybody. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, so for the county organization, there are a couple of things that fall into this. This is where we decide who's going to be commission president for the next year. It's also when we designate um, our purchasing authority and um, and appoint any board members that need to be reappointed or we're going to shift things around. As far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, colleagues, the only things that we, I don't think we're shifting anything around other than we're going to reappoint uh, Commissioner Luisa's to the NRGRDA, which we did earlier this year. The term had just expired. Yep. Um, so first, I'm going to move that we reappoint Commissioner Luisa's to represent the commission on the NRGRDA. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so that done. The only other thing is, to my knowledge, that we're moving around is uh, president. Um, and I'm going to move the Commissioner Luisos um, become president of the commission effective this meeting, and I will continue to run this meeting. He'll start running the next one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And with regard to purchasing authority, um, Commissioner Luisos was the purchasing authority in this commission uh, as a backup to County Administrator Ruth Lanier. Um, we have a tradition where we don't have the president be the purchasing authority. Um, I am willing to serve as the purchasing authority like I did last year. I make a motion to approve Ms. Taylor's purchase authority. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. so, and I also move that we reappoint uh, Ruth Lanier as the purchasing authority with the only exception, um, that's me as backup, is any expenses for the sheriff's department where her son was employed. That was Second. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So I think that's all the administrative stuff we have. We weren't planning to do any other board changes, were we? Nope, I don't okay. think so. All right. Well, my question of you two is who wants the minute? <laughs> I'll do them. You want to? Yeah. You don't have to. I was kind of after doing. No, I'll do them. But they're looking good now. I was just telling them. Those who do them, they're looking really good. All right, Mr. Young, you're ready to go. Even What's though you're... Up? Even though How you're not you Mr. Feeling? Young, feeling much better. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Even though you're not Mr. Young, we'll take these from you. Too. Yes, we will. Give me the pen. Well, I mean, she can. I, oh, I got to sign. Same. We already had the. Um. Well, I was looking at the. Yeah. He's going to sign. Yeah. And agree to approve. Them. Oh, so Brian's safe house. I thought Brian's safe house was operating in Raleigh County. They have one in uh, Germany, right? Hmm. Is that right there? It sounds right. Probably one in Montgomery, maybe one in Raleigh County as well. Yeah, they definitely have one in Raleigh County because I've had clients near it. Yeah. Um, let me just look. That I understand these very well. This says Exxon SB non taxable. Should have been non taxable. Oh, okay. Broad Street.
I guess it says it's saying it's in Mount Hope. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Is that new facility over there? Was that Dan's old place? There on the sun, there on the bypass. No, it's up, up the old um. This is a house, I think. It's got the district on the on the thing. I'm, I'm it not, might have been the one that was going to open up there and get and is planning to reopen at some point. We so. need to make a motion. Oh, um, move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Threw me off. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> January payroll. Make a motion to approve January payroll payable on January 13th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, vouchers and minutes. Um, they are caught up in 2022. Vouchers and invoices. I yeah. said vouchers and minutes. Okay, <laughs> I, have, I have questions on vouchers. Yes, vouchers and invoices first. I want to know. Um, on page two, it, it says from Royal King fuses and candy. Why do we purchase candy? And then on page of the regular and then uh, a $205.51 to the city of Oak Hill for gas reimbursement for extra Sheriff, you know anything about that one? What page is that on John? That's next to last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven slide them down. It was for extradition. Uh, thank you, Gia. Extradition. Extradition for, for prosecuting attorney's office. Agreed okay. to reimburse them for gasoline. Okay. Thank you, Gia. You're welcome. That's all the questions I had. I'm, I'm good. There's one I want to point out to you. On page one, where it says fifteen thousand dollars to that county payroll vendor cushion. So part of the problem with our payroll clearing account is Guardian is billed in advance, so you have to pay it before it's processed through the system, mm -hmm. and it puts you in the hole. So this creates a cushion there since the clearing account. Okay. Is only covered by what we put in there from running payroll, basically. Okay. Okay. All right, I move we approve the voucher's and invoices. Second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay, back to minutes. They're complete and current up to the end of 2022. So I sent them to everybody last night. And uh, now. Yeah, they read off all the dates. Yeah, I can read them all. I know what they were. Oh, they're backwards. All right, so um, December 14th. We had several special and emergency meetings. There's a sticky right there, Allison. With all There's the a sticky right there okay. with all the dates. All right. All right. Um, so September 7th, September 21st, October 5th, October 19th, October 25th, November 2nd, 10th, 11th, 17th, and December 7th, and two meetings on December 14th. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You have to sign on the bottom of every one of them. Every one of them, yeah. Okay, do we have any state settlements? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's for this thing.
Move we approve the state settlements. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Oh, well, I'm going to let him catch up for a minute. Oh. <laughs> Are you guys filling in this organizational report? Yeah, she'll have to type it in. Like we're on the right and we're on the right since she's been there. Yeah, she's going to have you weren't here all day though, were they? I know it's about me. Where are they? They were from Florida. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's my fault. We normally don't have that anyway. Well, in the elections, all because I didn't get them as early as I normally do. Um, all right, so how many five or I don't know. Well, we still have exhibit A time, so let's get on that. Okay, the first one is the draft that we mm -hmm. It's the new loans in every year. Like the officials for the budget. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few names like down at the bottom that are highlighted. What and sure what you want to do with them on the first page. And then Are we requiring presentations of everybody? No, that was in the next thing. Okay. If they want to, but it's not a requirement. State code requires they submit a budget. I'd say if the elected officials want to do a presentation, fine, but I don't think we should require it of everybody. Just make sure they submit their budget. I agree with that. Yeah, unless there's an increase of first something substantial. Well, and if they submit it, we can definitely come in and, and explain it. Right. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah, and we do it all in 10 minutes, get all the budgets. I mean, we can get a lot quicker, yeah. That and some people, like, regardless of what their positions are, doesn't necessarily mean they want to do a presentation. Yeah. Um, I'd say leave Tanya on there, but I don't think mm -hmm. Steve needs. I don't think he needs to leave. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Um, otherwise, any other changes, colleagues? No, same thing. Um, this reflects the new increases in PEI. Yeah, we added the nine and a half, nine point seven five percent, maybe three thousand. Okay. Yeah, I would prefer just over budget. Just Make sure. Yeah, 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 you don't yeah. Know. yeah, yeah. I always want to over budget, mm -hmm. but nothing changes like that. Okay. All right. Well, I move we approve the letter. The second with changes. With the one change. Right? Yep. All those in favor. Uh, and can uh, once Amy redoes the letter, can we just say her names and scan it? Yes. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. Board of Equalization Interview, legal advertising. Yeah, so this has to be published in the paper. Is it two weeks back? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Two weeks mm -hmm. ahead of time. Just to announce. Sorry, not Amy, but okay. Well, I'm going to be published. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Heidi Grant. Yeah, this is just the acceptance of the Heidi Grant. It's the letter. 
And this is the high intensity drug trafficking area. I was right. trying to remember when I got so poor. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> that was around when HIDAs were created. <laughs> All right, well, I'll move. We accept the hydrogram. Second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. This is just the courthouse improvement. Yeah. Courthouse facilities improvement grant. Yeah. Approval and signature. Which one is this? That's what I was like. Which one is That's for the sheriff's masonry. The masonry on the sheriff's. Um, uh, the one, okay, I just read that. That one on the minutes. And um, since Tom's now president, I think it's only a signature for the president. Mm -hmm. yes. So we got, a, we got approved for it then? Yes. Mm -hmm. But we had a 10% match, was it? It's 20% match. 20% match. You know what that amounted to? It's 38.6 is what we got, what we were awarded. The full amount was forty-eight thousand. So about twelve grand match. It's not bad. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. That's what I remember. Okay, I move we approve and accept the uh, courthouse facilities improvement grant. Second. All those in favor. Uh, Aye. Right. We're moving. Keep okay, going. Brownfields. <laughs> so this is the grant consultant contract. Um. Where the environmental was chosen. Um, and we just wanted to make sure because I'm the authorized representative of that, that y'all are okay with these side of it. Okay. Yeah, I am. I move we um, empower Ruth to sign these contracts. Second. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. We are, I think I read that in some minutes somewhere. Did that for Yeah, I think so. Yes. Uh, and then. You learn a lot. We already did the appointment to the NRG RPA board. Sign the letter. So we just need to sign the letter. Yep. Okay. And then saw the waste authority appointment. Yep. And Mr. Davis, he is here. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for applying and volunteering. This is an important board, and we've had a very difficult time getting it to getting people to meet and getting people to participate. Um, and I, I could tell by your application and things you said that you realize how important it is. I've got some experience. I've spent uh, 20, I've spent 27 years in the Brown Metro Atlanta. They're one of their key growth areas. And worked for the Atlanta Olympic Committee back in 1996. We used the uh, composting of city trash and all of the rest all the waste, but didn't burn off in their methane pits to. Uh, Use the lightweight soil to plant the great purple and freeze on the overpasses in a temporary basis till the Olympics are over. Then we went back and moved all that back off and threw all that again. So I'm very familiar with retention ponds, retention ponds run off, but that but affects all the waste that long. That where you put it, don't put it, and uh, where it needs to be separated. I'm, I'm thrilled that you applied and thank you. Yeah. Um, I move that we appoint Mr. Davis to the Salt Waste Authority. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That's everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Let's let's get on the um, county clerk permit position. Did you research the budget? Yeah, the budget. The budget was supported. The and election budget was the last over price for this this year, and then. Oh, I was thinking about the other night. Um, I can request to add that position in my budget within my budget for next year. I would definitely like to keep Barbara on. We'll have a letter for you here in a second. Okay. Great asset to that office. I move. I move we approve it for the next year. Second. All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. And next would be inflexible with my arm. <laughs> but your arm's not as flexible. It does make a good team. Um, is GST going to participate in this? He said he was going to try to get on at 10 o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move to observe holidays. 
that is ours. All of the other ones are ours. So we'll just knock those out and get GST in a 10. Um, so on the observed holidays, Ruth, you want to present? Yeah, so um, I guess since we've been involved in payroll and not the board, um, we were looking at observed holidays. So, you know, if you work Monday through Friday, you get paid for the observed holiday. But if you're like your seven day a week, 24 seven, like 911 law enforcement sometimes depart, they're working on the actual holiday. They're not getting paid, but the people on the observed holidays are getting paid. Mm -hmm. And I think it should be a different policy for the seven day a week employees. Yes. Because it's like on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. Day. yeah. So they're working. I think that they should be go by observed holidays, the seven day week employees. Absolutely. I Good move problem. we approve that. Second. All those in favor. Wait, your she, had more, she <laughs> had more to add. This effect of this current payroll, so December 25th forward. So, this one time, there will be like the people on the observed and the actual because they signed up to work the observed mm -hmm. in the 911 center and law enforcement. So, effect so one time. So, effective after this payroll, it would only be the actual. This one would be actual and observed for those departments. Okay. That way, nobody's shortchanged, basically. Just saying, so move I want to make sure I understand this when we do our for a year. Mm -hmm. So, for example, like you were saying, Christmas fell on weekend, definitely not when we were working, but the actual holiday, not the actual holiday, but the holiday that deserved was Monday. Mm -hmm. So, my question is would that be a regular work day for everybody else on that Monday? Yes. That deserved? And then that day would, we just feel like we're moving the holiday to the Actual day that's going to be. Yeah, realist. And it's not that many holidays. No, it's like, like this year. Yeah, this year's not like Fourth of July or Fed, but most of them it's like, you know, it's a certain Monday or a certain like Thanksgiving is that Thursday and Friday. So it's only the holidays that actually switch days over like the day of the week or the good effects. But I still think, but this time, only this pay period. Your observed and actual get paid because they did get signed up to earn that overtime. I think it's right. that's a little strange to it. If somebody works on Christmas Day mm -hmm. and they observe on Monday, they're not paid for Christmas Day, they're paid for Monday. Right. That's how it's been. But they, what, what if they don't? Change. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But that's what if they don't? But what if they don't work Monday? Are they still paid for? Uh, it would be in the actual holiday. So okay. If they if they okay. if they off the money, then that would be all right. okay. I get it. Got paid, right. I'd right. make sure I got it understood what it was not the difference. Okay. I was gonna make sure because we do work for the whole year, but mm -hmm. I wanted this year for the whole holiday to get it all signed up. And yeah. okay. I'm like when it's a habit day, we always they are working you non know, essential meaning they did stuff like that. But the fact itself, the fact itself that's non essential, when I say non essential, they all essential, but deputies who obey us, the tech bureau, stuff like that, they would deserve it on that money because it's absurd. Yeah, because we're going to have to try. Yeah. All right. So moved what Ruth Second. Thank you. All this in favor. Uh, okay. So um, at this time, I propose we go into executive session to discuss um, some personnel decisions, um, staffing, and, and uh, annual raises. And we can take a break and route if anybody needs to. Thank you. So executive session 924. What recording? All right, we're back on the record a little late at 10.07. And um, we did discuss some personnel issues in chambers, uh, no decisions made. Um, however, one of the matters we discussed were personnel raises. I want to start with Teresa Gregory, who we brought in today. Um, and based on discussions with uh, the DRC board members that I was able to reach, um, I recommend that we raise her salary to 65000 a year. Effective this pay period. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Congratulations and thank you for the good work. Thank you all. We wanted to recognize all that you've done and we've 
talked about it at length in chambers and, and just the changes have been phenomenal. This is the first time we haven't had to worry about that place for a long time. And as for home and the industry that it's so beneficial in so many ways. There's so much going on in the of course I'm a drug addiction and addiction to the middle because I know how much more over there. You've got the your plain old, you know, non-criminal, non-violent um subjects over there doing what they gotta do and decide that they're never gonna do that again because they <laughs> they would like to work by day instead of sitting next to so, there's a lot going on. Well, done a great job. It's great. The judges, you restored their faith in the program, the community's faith in the program. And I mean, I actually heard somebody talking, singing your praises who has a, a family member in your program. And so it's neat to go out and hear that and hear how things have changed so much because that family member had been in the program before. And so that the family member was just just saying how wonderful you were and how wonderful this family member of hers thought you were and, and everybody over there, the ambiance has changed. And on the fiscal front, that's changed. I mean, the center is basically supporting itself. And I'm hopeful with some help from us when, when all the parties are ready to pull the trigger that we might be able to expand for your suggestion into the Valley. I think, I think we've already shown that, you know, this program up here is starting to stand on its own feet. It's definitely a unique collection of um, services that we offer, unique to a certain demographic that, that really are overlooked and it's expanding would be awesome. It'd be a wonderful day and I'm ready. I'm just ready. I just want to do it. Okay. Well, we'll get we'll get that on. In fact, if you you know if you've gotten the data together, maybe we can get a budget presentation from you, and um, we can make some decisions then because we're going to make spending decisions in February. So that'd be the time to to get it to us. Um, seemed like I had another question to ask you. Do you have the information on that state program where people who want to hire um, addicts who are or former addicts who are in recovery? Over there. Um, I'm not quite off the top of my head. Is there a specific one you're talking about? Because there's a, a few that I'm thinking of, like Jobs for Hope. Is that what you're thinking? That might be the one where they pay the employer um, reimburse the salaries for the participants. You're, that's the newer one you're talking about. Yeah, um, it's kind of like the replacement for Jobs and Hope, I do believe. I'm not sure, but um, we still get Jobs and Hope participants in there. But yes, there is a new program that is paying folks, and we do have. Um, uh, lady that works through that office. She's from Arona County. I think she works. We we met her through FMRS, the contact over there, and she's done a presentation for us. And she'll be coming back to do more speak to our vendors. So, can you can you provide me the contact information? Um, Thank you. Matter of fact, I have some of it on my phone, but I'll email it. I'll, I'll send it over to you. Okay. Can you send it to all commissioners? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know Commissioner Luisis is interested in employing people through that program, yeah. and and I had told him about it. I I had heard about it, and I think we talked about it before. We talked about creating our own program if we um, chose to. But um, I know some of our local business uh, leaders in Oak Hill do use the program mm -hmm. to great success. And the owner of Pinheads sung the praises through the roof. So I'm going to connect you with her. I saw that on my list. She, she's all about she's all about it. Yeah. And it seems like the uh, the folks, especially the ones we have in public court, went up there to work. Um, she works well with them and they've been pretty successful over there as well. So we appreciate her. Yeah, she's she's awesome. I'll see you all there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for everything you've been doing for us, giving us some peace of mind. I hope it continues for a long time. Same. Thank you all. You've been great to work with, very supportive. Good to talk to you all day. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. All right, and the um, second raise I wanted to move is a $10,000 uh, per year raise for Ruth Lanier, effective this pay period. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you for everything you're doing. <laughs> we appreciate you, girl. Ruth has saved this county a ton of money and a ton of headache, and it's hard to quantify. I mean, that amount doesn't even come close. Does not, not it does not even come close to what you have been doing for the past. I think she didn't pay attention when we talked about that, did she? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, there's a good possibility. <laughs> she does tune us out on occasion. Yeah. All right, let's get back to uh, the 10 o'clock agenda item and a little behind on the GST contract. Do we have Mr. Wadsworth on the Zoom? Yes, I'm here. Hey there. Um, so, you know, we've had some issues over at the prosecutor's office and other places in the county, and I understand you've had some staffing issues there. Do um, you think you're going to be able to remedy those staffing issues in the near yeah. Uh, that's a good question. And, and, um, we're working on it right now. Um, you know, we're trying to make sure that, um, you know, we get the right staff, you know, with the right qualifications to be, you know, uh, responding specifically to what we're asked to come down and, and, and do that was probably our, our biggest problem over the past year is we, we really, uh, we allowed some staff that hadn't had the experience um, in some areas, uh, and we really didn't understand, you know, where, you know, they had just not been able to 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 deliver the way they should. So, I mean, we did bring down, uh, you know, one of our senior staff members and uh, to the prosecutor's office. And um, from my understanding, things did go better after he was uh, involved and, and we we have other staff members that are you know higher caliber and we do intend to get them involved and and stay on top of of things and make sure we're all aware of you know whether or not we're meeting expectations um and i i want to be very very honest uh i just felt like um you know on our side you know, we completely missed how, you know, the 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 requests that the prosecutor had um, were just getting backed up. And, you know, and there there are always issues that might interfere with things being done, but it, it communication is always, you know, necessary to make sure everyone that's involved knows what status is. And uh, not only did our staff you know, uh, you know, let down on communications. But I personally, in dealing with the prosecutor, I, I misunderstood and and miscommunicated. So these are all things that uh, uh, we don't intend to continue. You know, these, but and I don't ever like to make excuses. But um, yes, yeah, staffing uh, and bringing on new folks has definitely been a challenge. Uh, I don't mean to, because I'm the last person that wants to give the pandemic, you know, uh, a reason to, you know, to make excuses, but it changed our industry. It really did. Um, so you, we're definitely going through some uh, rearranging and modifying the way we go about doing things because it's, it's a, the landscape is different, so. Okay, well, I, I know that we have rolled out um, our new emails um, this year, and, and we were supposed to have everything done, all the new emails issued by the end of this year, and then um, so we can give westvirginia.gov notice. We want to give those accounts six more months just to be safe for everybody who has those accounts to be able to forward their mail, and then we're going to stop paying for those. So I just want to make sure you understand that support for those those email addresses is is a high priority for us because the purpose of getting our own domain and doing that is so we can respond better and more um, effectively and efficiently to FOIA requests and requests of information for the public. And so all of our community, you know, official communications are um, tracked and available for public you know, information. So it's really important to us that we be transparent and we want to make sure that that, that 
you know, that our emails are working. That's how we communicate with the people we serve. We will definitely make sure that we get that taken care of and we'll be timely and um, and we'll take care of it competently. Well, I think I think I'd like to give you guys an opportunity, I mean, in my view, um, but I really am reluctant to sign a, a one year contract at this point, given the issues we have. Um, so I'd like to move that we um, approve the contract for uh, six months. And then we can renew at the six months, assuming everything has been, um, you know, everything, the services is, is what you intend it to be. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And I see Chief Purdue has walked in with a new deputy. I think the sheriff's right here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's just not helping me purge all my 22 stuff in the corner. Okay. He's, he's my <laughs> oh no. <laughs> he's the only sorry. <laughs> he's the only deputy that, that Rod has to look up to. <laughs> Did you have anything that um I do. Okay. Um dealing with the range stuff. I mean, I know it's been time consuming and just trying to get people to come down here and meet some. And I met with uh, John Lake today. We had him for what, a couple hours. And um John's life and got married with John. I mean, I thought with John before he's great. And uh, he he gave me a bit, but he went above and beyond. What I mean by that is he is he told me part of this quote. I know you probably need two more before we get started. But um, y'all familiar with the yellow gate before you drop down to the pond? It's top of the hill. He's gonna fix that road all the way down past the pond, gravel up. Even if we wanted to clean the pond up on the side, it's part of the quote too. You know what they call them, uh, cattails. Mm -hmm. Clean them cattails out of where people can fish. They have all everybody tried out in one spot. And we kind of moved it from where we were thinking of because what we thought of before we decided to get on this house down there. It's nowhere near his house. We passed the pond, gravel past the pond, we straight to the holler towards the gas mill. That's where they have all their, where they burn stuff, park burn stuff, and stuff like that. Clean it all up, gravel it, put our shooting lanes and stuff in there. A hydro seed. He said, I want to make make it look good. He said, it's my name. Oh, so you're talking about the park? Yes. Park. Yes. So is that Bill County property? Yes, or is that the property the maps? It's like those models when you do it like that. We're way within our boundaries. The south side all night. Are you, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? Well, I, I think I am, but I'm just wondering if the property is not, is it county property That's or, or it, is it, is it, is it the leased property or is it's it? It's not the lease. The county property, Mr. Bragg was here, went up there and kind of revamped it from where the leased property is and the county owned property. Um, the barn is right there. It's a natural barn. It's a slate on the side of the hillside. We can actually utilize it for our advantage. Um, he'll come in and he'll wrap a lot. The closest to the, the leased property is about 50 to 60 yards from. The point of completion from the range if that makes sense. Um, one thing about we have to leave the road open. We're going to re readjust the road to the left about 20 feet from the gas company to go up there and, and tender wells. But uh, he, he gave us a quote. The bad thing is, it's trying to get all this thing else in here. I raced out to see if you know, get up in the valley, see if I'm talking about this afternoon to try to get up there this week and look at it. I know we need two more. Two more quotes, but uh, but John he he figured everything up for us. Plus he went above and beyond trying to think of on up a little bit to fix that road, make us a parking area. And I don't know if you ever get back up in the little barn and stuff that would be the Dutch. And he's a on it. Where is it from the uh, animal shelter? Animal shelter. It's right animal the shelters the here. Model. And this is where he's talking about. Yeah, that'll be about much better. Better. We still need to get it out yeah, of the floods. Somewhere but. around two miles from each other. This is what his proposal says. He kind of eyeballed a little bit uh -huh. in case he's gone. And the gravel property, 450 yards from the yellow gate to the new range, level across 150 foot by 320 foot. Uh, gravel at the end of 15 car parking with range land four foot wide. The lanes will be four foot wide. Gravel. 
from the three to the five, the seven, ten, fifteen, twenty, to twenty-five. Um, clean the pond up and uh, make it make the area look presentable. Now, uh, I told him like the shelter stuff. We'll do ourselves. We'll build that to save money. I thought I had money left over from the man who was a lot of tools for most of the time. I don't want to say what he's proposing. No, that was a lot of getting <laughs> Okay. But he also said, I know that we have to do the community. He said, he can start as early as mine and be out the February 1st, down in my machine. I mean, how does that work if we've asked for other quotes and or whatever and haven't gotten? You, did you publicize them? I think that's just a little different from the money was getting this from the state or not, I didn't know. Or arrange, I don't know what the stipulation is with it. I think uh, so. I think that money was supposed to be directed to spend on that piece of property. I mean, I'm just, I'm trying to look. At, I mean, I thought that money was supposed to be. It wasn't directed. for. for uh, Specific piece of property is just for a grant. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure. Like that was our match. Yeah, we had, yes. we had the discussion. I, I remember talking specifically because he he was even asking, you know, where you're going to put it yet. Right. Like when we did the big photo. You know, things I know we, we looked at different things with Mr. Luis and stuff with, with the ski grains and stuff like that. I think we're in a better position if we do what we just look at today because. You don't have to worry about other people and uh, trying to get permission to use it when you're not using it. Now we have our own range for the Pick Any Sheriff's Department that we can teach you how to do it. Can, can we pull that up on the? I'm just curious where it's at. I'm still well. Can can we pull? Up? I got property viewer here. I'm looking at the property, and I, I want to show the commission. I want you to show the commission where it's at. On, on. Wayne had a map, but has anyone had? I didn't want to take it from him. My friend, you know, Justin's on that. That's why I said, if you pull up, can you pull up West Virginia Property Viewer? Just pull up West Virginia Property Viewer. I got it on here, but my phone is it's small. Well, I think we're getting information right now, so I think we'll oh, okay. go ahead and convene this okay, meeting. Okay, Next yeah. yeah, I just See, we okay. can all stay here and do it. I just want to move to no, no, I, no, I, no, I agree. Well, I moved to adjourn. Oh yeah, we have, where is That's, it? It's in ten fifteen. Oh, 945. How did I skip that? I was confused. Oh, I totally skipped it. Okay, let's do that real quick and then we'll get off the record. And, and you can. I just have one more thing here. Okay, so um, Armstrong Creek. Armstrong Creek is in dire straits. Um, they have gone the majority of the last two holidays, three holidays, without water. Um, all the water resources are being sent to Raleigh County, and I understand there's a crisis there, but there's also a crisis in Armstrong Creek. So um, I ask that this be put on the agenda for us to ask the state for an emergency declaration. Remember when we were briefed um, at the last meeting by the Public Service Commission folks, and he said an emergency declaration may help um, get that done in about half the time the things that they need done so i think we have to ask and statutorily i'm not sure that we declare even though we have uh, we can go ahead and declare an emergency but i think it's the governor's authority that actually activates anything right. um so i mean wouldn't hurt for us to declare one for armstrong creek and i think we need, need to send a letter to the governor and ask that he declare one as well because because of the other emergency, Armstrong Creek is not even getting the resources that it otherwise would be able to get. And, and it's no less, I realize that there's no hospital up Armstrong Creek, but there is, there are disabled people who are trying to live up there and uh, who don't have water, who are trying to haul their own water from the creek. Um, so I'm going to move that we uh, declare a state of emergency for Armstrong Creek and Fayette County and that we, for the water situation, and that we ask the governor to do so as well and get the help they need up there. Just a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have a letter ready for that? Uh, yeah, Amy, the details for that 
to, to back that letter up, like the facts are in the minutes for the 1214 meeting, the morning meeting. And if you want to pull something together and send it to me, I'll take a swipe at it and then we'll, and, and we can just let them stamp after everybody yeah, agrees. That's for the entire year. Sorry. That's through the end of December. That's about mid December. I'm getting a little more up to date on what this could cost. I don't know how I said well, that. Did you to get that? Check that by you and I like shut down. I should have said something. Yeah, Maybe she wants to do that by Instagram. No, I would have gotten that over with. I hope people weren't on there waiting on it. Let me know. Well, it wasn't too bad for and us, then, but remember still. you got like sorry about that, Orange you, you guys are on there waiting. Um, also, I know I know that the executive committee of the Republican Party has been um, was approached by the Democratic Party about raising money or contributing money to the people in Glen Daniel. And I brought to their attention that we have people here in Fayette that need water as well. So I believe and probably let the Democratic Party know as well. So if anybody's donating that we can gather money for both sides. Would you do that for me, Michelle? Let Absolutely. them know. Would you I'll let them know? Yeah. Would you let them know about the Armstrong Creek situation? Also, there's a situation in Paint Creek where the hazmat spill was. So those are the two areas where we're trying to get donations for water, at least for Fayette County. Okay. All right. So are we done with today's formal business yep. agenda? Okay. I'm going to move to adjourn and then we can Second. ask our questions. Also, I went down and pulled the uh, maintenance, you know, mileage for all the vehicles in the thick county.